I wasn't supposed to be taking this flight today. Now, I was supposed to be taking a flight today with Turkmenistan Airlines across to Bangkok, but I found out last night that they'd cancelled my flight and left me with no way of getting there. Brilliant. So after much faffing last night, I was able to find a flight that would take me to Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia with Biman Bangladesh Airlines. This video is brought to you by Dashlane. I honestly didn't know what to expect with B-Man. I mean, just look at their reviews. Avoid, never take B-Man, disaster. May God help this airline. Ouch. The bad reviews went on and on. Just how bad was this airline? I didn't know, but I did know that I had to find out. B-Man don't offer online check-in, so I headed to the check-in desk, which was pretty crowded even three hours out. Most passengers seemed to be carrying several large boxes to check in. Hello. Right, yeah. That's all I was doing. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it all, awesome. It and, and you're here today. I'm here today. There you go. <laughs> nice and well. It's actually an honour. <laughs> Thanks very much. This will go on my suitcase. <laughs> Uh, you got no luggage? No, just hand baggage. So, I'm doing this way. Because you're probably the only passenger who's just got hand luggage. <laughs> I know. <laughs> give you a little bit less weight to take, anyway. Nice so, yeah. to meet you, Norm. See you. Give my love to the wretch. Oh, I, I will do. Thank you, you very much. Yeah, nice to meet you. Yeah, and I'll see you soon. You will. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. So, I checked in by the lovely Kieran, who is actually a viewer of the channel. That was um, pretty cool. Nice to meet you, Kieran. And now, time to head to the departure gate uh, via, of course, the lounge. So, let's head and find out what it's like. So off to find the Plaza Premium Lounge here at Heathrow Terminal 4. Let's go and see where it is. The Plaza Premium Lounge is used by B-Man as well as some other airlines including Qatar Airways. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's not a bad lounge as contract lounges go and it's pretty comfortable with some good views across the apron. So not a bad view here at the Plaza Premium Lounge at Heathrow Terminal 4. Um, and as contract lounges go, it's not too bad either. Uh, quite a lot of space around. Decent selection of food and drink too, so it's not bad. The sign says go to gate, but we're still quite a bit early here, so. So here's the first flight of the trip down to Kuala Lumpur. It's a Boeing 787-9 that b have only had for about a month now. There's no pictures or videos or anything about their business class product on the 787-9. So I have absolutely no idea what it's going to look like when I get on board. So first leg then on this 787 will be to Dakar in Bangladesh with a stop I believe in a place called Silet which is in northern Bangladesh. I think they drop a lot of passengers off there and then we make a short like half an hour trip down to Dakar from there. So let's go and get on board. Hello, how are you? Good, yeah, good, thank you. Thanks very much, cheers. I think it was time to head down the jet bridge to see just what B-Man 787 Hello, was like. Yeah. Thank you. Say I was surprised that the layout was a bit of an understatement. The 787-8 has you. just a 222 configuration, whereas the Dash 9 has this incredible suite configuration. The seat's actually the BE Aerospace Super Diamond seat, as seen on loads of other airlines, such as Qatar Airways, American and even British Airways, who have added a door and called it the club suite. So on board and wow, this is totally not what I was expecting. It's a really nice configuration in a 121 um, with the little suites at the sides and the two suites in the middle. We've got a nice big TV there. A little TV on remote there with power and everything. Literature and stuff at the back. It's really good. 
up a flatbed as well. Looking forward to this flight immensely now. And um, we've got about eight hours, I think, but actually it's ten hours because we've got a stop in Silet on the way as well. So we've been handed out so far headphones. Yes. Quite a chunky amenity kit. I'll go through that in a little while. And finally, the most important thing, the menu. Dinner tonight was a salad to start, followed by a choice of chicken curry, lamb or salmon. Of course, being on Biman, I needed to take the Bangladeshi curry, the first of many on this trip. Breakfast was a choice of chicken tikka or chicken buna. The headphones weren't bad quality, I didn't bother using my Bose headphones on this flight. The immunity kit was well presented and pretty well stocked. It came complete with all the usual amenities, as well as a bottle of mouthwash that I thought was a nice touch. The eye mask, however, was a little bit basic and I ended up using my BA one that I take with me all the time. Before pushback there was a snack of peanuts, cashews and canapes that just screamed out, here comes the aeroplane. The jet bridge was disconnected and we pushed back ready for the flight to Bangladesh. The taxi out to 27 right at Heathrow is a long one from Terminal 4 and involves waiting to cross the south runway before taxiing the length of Heathrow. Eventually we lined up and got on our way for the 8 hour flight to Silet. Our route tonight took us east from London across Germany and Eastern Europe. We crossed the Black Sea towards Turkey before crossing the Caspian states of Georgia and Azerbaijan. From there we crossed Turkmenistan, Afghanistan and Pakistan before starting our descent over northern India into Bangladesh. Flight time tonight was 8 hours 53 minutes at a cruising altitude of 35, 37 and 39,000 feet. I was impressed that there was Wi-Fi on the flight and at a reasonable price too. It was pretty quick too, I got download speeds of 25 meg on this flight. The in-flight entertainment was pretty decent, there was a good choice of Hindi and Bangla movies with a few western movies too. There was also live TV with news channels such as BBC, CNN and NHK available to watch live. I settled on finishing a movie that I started watching on a previous flight, the excellent Hindi movie Dadak. I thought it was interesting that the headphones had a note asking us to be careful with them as they were national property. Considering Beeman recently tracked down and took legal action against some passengers who damaged a TV screen on a 787, I opted to be particularly careful with the headphones on this flight. Pretty soon the dinner service started. The salad was delicious but the Bangladeshi chicken curry was incredible. On a flight your taste buds are generally desensitised a little bit, this spicy curry was still really spicy yet delicious. After dinner I took a cheese course and a traditional cup of green tea which finished the dinner perfectly.
right, so it's now about three hours after takeoff, arriving into Silet in about six hours' time. So I'm going to try and get a little bit of sleep um, on this flight and see how far before Silet I get woken up. The flat bed's pretty comfortable, nice, decent size. I'm certainly able to lay down straight, which is always a bonus. So, yeah, let's try and get some sleep and I will speak to you in the morning. Good night. Well, good morning. It's broad daylight. I've just been woken up. Um, we're landing at Silet. I'm um, a very comfortable night's sleep, actually. Um, I slept pretty much all the way through. Very comfortable on the um, Biman 7-8, so. We started our approach into Silet and touched down 30 minutes ahead of schedule at Osmani International Airport. ground in Silet where it seemed the majority of passengers were getting off. So on the ground then here in Silet, Osmani International Airport, I think we've got about an hour here I think, they're just offloading the passengers and then we continue for the short 40 minutes or so down to Dhaka. So far I have to say really enjoying Biman, they're really good. Um, this seat is pretty decent, the service has been fantastic too. Soon we began our pushback before being promptly towed back onto the stand. Pushed back from the stand and then been towed back onto the stand. We've just said that there's a sick passenger on board and then they need to take him off. So, so we just put back on stand. Right, let's try again. Second time lucky and we taxied out for a rocket departure for the 25 minute flight down to Dhaka. for this leg took us direct towards Dhaka before following a DME arc into Dhaka airport. Flight time for this leg was 25 minutes at a cruising altitude of 16,000 feet. In no time at all we were commencing our approach into Bangladesh's capital city Dhaka. down smoothly right on time, even with the passenger having been offloaded in Silet.
I planned to get a visa on arrival and meet up with some local spotters in Dhaka, but it soon became clear that that wouldn't be happening. Okay, so plans have kind of gone a little bit um, wrong here at Dhaka. Um, I was actually going to meet up with some um, Bangladeshi spotters here at Dhaka Airport who were going to take me around and show me some cool viewing places, but I've just found out that I can't actually leave the airport. Um, they do a visa on arrival, but with my flight only being at 7 o'clock tonight, they won't do me a transit visa or anything. They won't do me a full visa because I'm booked on a flight straight out. So. Unfortunately, I'm trapped here at the airport a la Tom Hanks in the terminal for the next seven hours. It's not too bad. I'm going to try and find the lounge. Apparently, there is a nice lounge here. So um, I'm going to head up there and find that and try and find a way to while away the next um, seven hours or so ahead of my next flight to Kuala Lumpur. Hello. Hi. Hi. Gutted that Biman wouldn't let me get a visa to leave the airport, I headed to the Maslin Lounge to chill out ahead of my next flight. It's a pretty small lounge with only a basic range of food and drink, but there was still some nice curry for breakfast. So seeing as I've got like seven hours here at the Muslin Lounge at Dhaka, um, I found this little nap room. It's just a couple of little beds, so I'm going to try and get some sleep because I'm still exhausted. So hopefully get a bit of sleep and I won't be quite as grumpy for the next flight. While I'm waiting in the lounge, I'd like to say a big shout out to the sponsor of this video, Dashlane. Dashlane makes it super easy to securely store all of your passwords, cards and important documents and access them on the go. It allows you to quickly generate a unique, highly secure password for each website you visit and auto fills them on your devices so you never have to remember a password again. It's far more secure than reusing that same password with different numbers at the end over and over again. It also makes it really easy to fill in your card details whenever you make an online purchase which is really handy for me as I can just click and fill in my card details without having to go rooting through my wallet. Aside from cards it stores things like your passport so wherever I am in the world I can just open the app and pull down my passport details great for when I'm trying to check in online or apply for e-visas when they want to know every last tiny detail of your life. Before I was lucky enough to do this as a full-time job I worked in IT security for years. Password managers like Dashlane are regarded by experts to be the safest, most secure way to generate and protect your online credentials. Even if Dashlane were to get hacked, it would be like breaking into a bank but not being able to open any of the vaults. Only you have the key to your vault, your master password, which Dashlane don't have, and you have to enter it on your laptop or phone to get access to your passwords. So try the exclusive offer of getting Dashlane for free on your first device at dashlane.com slash and then when you want to upgrade to premium, which you will, Use my code NOL to get 25% off. Right, time to head down to the gate. Flight will be boarding in the next kind of 15, 20 minutes, so let's go. So I was expecting a 737-800 for this flight. That's what was scheduled. Um, and it's what I've picked my seat on and everything, but I just got to the gate and there's a 777 parked outside. <laughs> We were soon called for boarding and I joined the other passengers heading down the jet bridge to the plane. This didn't go quite as smoothly though and an irate member of staff sent everybody quickly back up the jet bridge. Kuala Lumpur? Yes. It turned out we'd been sent to the wrong plane and we waited back in the gate area for the right plane. Eventually though it was time to do take two at boarding. Biman board economy class first and business class last, which is the first time that I've ever come across this. It kind of makes sense, it gives you longer to relax in the airport and means that you don't have a plane full of passengers pushing past you after you board. But I can imagine some westerners not being quite as happy as being pushed to the back of the queue. There's a dedicated business class minibus out to the plane and we teasingly drove straight past the 777 and 787 on the ramp to the 737 that sat behind it. This one was delivered to American Transair in 2001 before going on to Brazilian airline Gol in 2005. 
In 2010, she was bought by B-Man. On board the 737-800 has a 2-2 configuration in business class with these lovely big armchairs. Um, so this is not a triple seven. <laughs> it's a 737, as planned. Boo! But anyway, on board the B-Man 737 down to Kuala Lumpur. I snacked on some nuts before we pushed back from the gate, and before long we pushed back and headed out to the runway. For this last sector then took us south from Bangladesh into Myanmar before crossing Thailand and down into Malaysia. Flight time tonight was 3 hours and 33 minutes at a cruising altitude of 37,000 feet. Dakar on the B-Man 737-800 and this is really comfortable. It's like flying in the olden days with the old armchair reclining seats. It's really comfy, uh, especially for just a two or three hour flight. I'm not sure I'd want to do any longer on it, but um, for a three hour flight, this is really good. They've just come and taken my dinner order, so I've taken another chicken curry. It is amazing. Dinner service tonight was a salad to start and then another chicken curry for the main course. Once again, it was really nice. Thank you. The crew are really, really nice on this flight, as they were on the last one. Um, and they've just noticed that I am coming down with a bit of a cold at the moment, and they've brought around something, and she said to try this because it's really good for dealing with a cold, apparently and it clears it up and makes you feel better right away. I'm not entirely sure what it is. It has some sort of sesame oil in it. Maybe my Bangladeshi viewers can enlighten me a little bit more as to what it is, but I'm gonna try it and see <laughs> if it really does make me feel any better. So let's have a go. See why it clears up your cold. <laughs> Jesus. Seeking something a little less lively, I finished dinner with a cup of tea. In the bathroom, there were hints of this aircraft's former life in Brazil in the form of signs written in Portuguese. Interestingly, there was also a mop, which is the first time I've ever seen this in an aircraft bathroom. Eventually, we started our descent and the bright lights of Kuala Lumpur appeared below. to Kuala Lumpur today cost me £1,172 or just over $1,500. US This is for a distance of 6,748 miles giving a cost per mile of 17 pence. Thank you so very much, have a good evening, thank you. people are going to be flying on Biman Bangladesh, 
I was told to expect massive delays, beaten up old aircraft and terrible service. But you know what? They're actually really good. The flights were all on time. The aircraft were amazing, especially that 787. Incredible business class on that. The service was absolutely incredible and the crew were just, well, amazing in every single way. I really enjoyed that trip with Beam and Bangladesh and I hope you did too. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time.